Let's proceed with our exploration of compressors, Part C. In Part A, we cover the basic layout of the compressor. And in Part B, we cover the shaft design details. Now in Part C, we'll cover the details on the motor stator winding. Let's see the housing here first. Housing is a crucial component in a compressor. It encapsulates main parts such as the motor, bearings, and shaft. Therefore, tight tolerance and precise machinings are required for this housing. For this housing, you will need to install the motor, also known as the stator assembly. The stator assembly consists of the stator and winding as shown below. In a compressor, the stator core and the winding plays crucial roles in the operation of the motor that drives the compressor. The stator is also called a lamination stack. A lamination stack is made by stacking a thin lamination, typically made out of silicon steel. The thickness of lamination can range from 0.2 mm to 0.5 mm, contingent upon your specific application. While thinner lamination can decrease the iron loss, it may also lead to higher stacking cost due to the requirement for more stacking. This lamination sheet can be assembled with the embossed feature or welding to form a lamination stack, also known as a stator. Additionally, lamination sheets can be glued together. The glued lamination stacks provide better motor efficiency but can increase the manufacturing cost compared to the embossed and welding type assemblies. So the stator core serves as a foundation of the winding and helps to guide the flow of the magnetic flux. Now the winding, often made out of copper wire, is wound around the stator core. The winding is designed to have a specific number of turns and configuration to generate the required magnetic field strength and torque for efficient compressor operation. When you install winding into the stator, it is advised to install the insulation paper. This installation of winding and insulation paper can be automated well. So the building process looks like this. Insert insulation paper into the stator. Install winding. Connect the wires and then Lace the end turns. Once assembled, now you need to varnish the stator assembly. Motor windings are dipped into a varnish tank and then set to cure in an oven. This varnish technique is traditional dip and bake varnishing. Varnish helps to insulate the windings from contaminants to make the windings rigid and tight and to dissipate heat. There are many different ways to varnish the motor, such as dip and bake varnish method that we just discussed. Also, there's a trickle varnish method where a stream of varnish is trickled onto the winding head while the table turns. During this process, it is important to preheat the winding. Also, there's a vacuum pressure impregnation method which utilizes a vacuum pressure tank filled with the varnish to fully impregnate the motor winding and insulation with the resin or varnish. Also, you can use bondable wire to make the wires rigid. This self-bonding magnet wire features an extra adhesive coating applied at a thin film over the wire, and upon the exposure to heat, the wires adhere to each other, forming a bond. This particular method is suitable for small device motor applications. So when an electric current flows through the winding, it generates a magnetic field that interacts with the rotating magnetic field produced by the compressor's rotor. Let's come back to this figure here. This state assembly is installed into the housing. To accommodate the state assembly, typically the housing inner diameter tolerance range is 0.1 mm for this size of compressor. And the total runout tolerance range is 0.075 mm. 
These tolerance will ensure seamless assembly of the state assembly into the housing. Total runout tolerance will be used a lot in the compressor design. Motor cooling is crucial to enhance the motor efficiency, and cooling jacket is used to cool the state assembly as stated in the part 35 video. Today we cover the motor stator winding component in the compressor and how they are made and fit into the compressor housing. In the next video, we'll delve into the further details about the other components in the compressor. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to explore, feel free to leave comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.